Hi, welcome to your 14 day weather forecast. There has been an autumnal flavour to things recently with heavy rain and strong winds affecting large parts of the United Kingdom. And the distinctly mixed conditions are set to continue through the coming days. In fact, we could have our first named storm of the new season. If it happens, it will be called Agnes. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the view across your pan the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Monday the 25th. At the outset, it is mainly dry, but through Tuesday, showery outbreaks of rain push northeastwards and in places they could be heavy. However, it's Wednesday where the attention needs to be focused on because that nasty area of low pressure moves up from the southwest. It tracks across the northern half of Britain and it's going to be bringing heavy rain and very strong, potentially disruptive winds to parts of the country. This could be Agnes. Now, I'm going to come back to it in a little bit more detail later on, but on the animation it pulls away and then another nasty area of low pressure pushes across the UK a little bit further south perhaps. Beyond that it's quite changeable, although high pressure has more influence at times across the southern half of the UK. Increasingly, the risk of rain becomes focused on the northwest. That's also where the strongest winds are likely to be later in the week. The air temperature and jet stream sequence really helps to explain what's going on. Jet stream often makes a beeline for the UK very strong at times. That darker shading indicates it, although perhaps towards the end there it's weakening a little bit. Also, with winds coming in from west of the southwest, it's never going to be particularly cold. And the temperatures, therefore, that we can expect down at the ground level, 15 GMT Tuesday, 22 in central and eastern England, a little bit cooler, as is often the case, heading northwards and westwards. Forwards to Thursday, values haven't changed a great deal, perhaps dipped a little bit in the southeast and east Anglia. Onwards to the weekend, not much difference here either. But by Sunday, at least on this computer model run, it is turning significantly warmer in southern and central Britain, 24, 25 Celsius there in central and eastern counties. And if you see northern France, 29, very warm or even hot for the first day of October. But don't focus on the details too much at this point. Coming back to the midweek storm, what I've done here is put the forecast output from four of the different uh, global models, UK Met, GFS, ECM, and the Canadian GEM next to each other so we can see how they are each handling the development of this low pressure. At this point, which is 12 GMT on Wednesday, if there's good agreement, it's centered just here to the uh, northwest. Heavy rain and strong winds associated with it. Now moving forwards 12 hours, 00, zero GMT Thursday, it's begin beginning to pull away northeastwards. Going forwards to Friday, 00, zero GMT, so the first storm has now moved away, but this is Quite interesting because the UK Met Office and GFS runs are showing another area of low pressure tracking across Great Britain and that would also, as I've indicated earlier, bring the risk of further heavy outbreaks of rain and strong winds. But if you look down to the bottom right there, the Canadian model is showing things somewhat different. There is an area of low pressure but it's much further to our southwest and across most of the UK at this point it's quite a dry picture. Finally, at 12 GMT on Friday, there's reasonable agreement that high pressure will be starting to build up from the south, so drier conditions returning, although the Canadian model again is something of an outlier here with that area of low pressure just still to our southwest. Lots taking place there. Now, in terms of the actual wind gusts which could be expected for, from the first storm, the charts here are from the UK V model, the one on the left is 15 GMT on Wednesday, the middle one 00, zero GMT, so midnight Wednesday, and finally 06 GMT on Thursday, the 28th. The strongest winds in counties uh, surrounding the Irish Sea, where gusts of maybe 70, even a little bit higher, can be expected in miles per hour. Inland areas across northern Britain, between 50 and 60 miles an hour, quite widely. And further south, it's going to be blustery, but the guidance for most of the computer models is saying that strong winds there are not going to be a major problem, maybe 20, 30 or 40 miles an hour in 
in central and southeastern parts of England. It's really the north and the west where the worst conditions are likely to be. The Mugrep's tree charts help to explain things in a little bit more detail. The one here shows forecast wind gusts for London. Each line represents the output from one of the individual runs in the model. So most are going for gusts of between 30 and 40 miles an hour with that first area of low pressure. The spread widens in the days which follow and it's highlighting uncertainty about what's going to happen with that second area which was showing on the initial animation. Further west to Cardiff, the gusts here are stronger. Many of the runs going for 50 miles an hour or maybe a little bit over. And in Belfast it's a similar story. So a few actually going up towards 60 miles an hour there. As I've been suggesting, the strongest winds are likely to be in the north and the west. That's where the greatest risk of disruption is. Rainfall. The aggregates here from the ECM and GFS models for days 0 to 5 both indicate that the wettest conditions are going to be in the north and the west. Interestingly, amounts of rain in the southeast and East Anglia, at least according to the GFS, are very low indeed, just one or two millimetres in places, not even measurable amounts. So it's just showing how, although we've got this deep area of low pressure pushing in and maybe a second one as well, in the southeast, rainfall amounts are staying very low. ECM on the left does have higher totals in those areas, but even so, still single figures in millimetres. So it does look at the present time as if these areas of low pressure, although bringing strong winds, relatively strong winds to the southeast and east Anglia, it's really the west and the north which are going to be hit hardest, both in terms of rain and strong winds. Moving forward to the 0 to 10 day period. Totals have increased, especially in the north and the west. The orange is there in western Scotland, indicating over 100 millimetres over the 10 day period. But again, look at the southeast and east Anglia. There are some places where there still isn't any measurable rain according to the GFS, although ECM once more showing somewhat wetter conditions in those areas. So I think. It, the, the general distribution of rainfall is being quite well modelled. Whether or not there will be more rain in the southeast and east Anglia than the GFS is indicating, well, I think the answer to that is probably yes, but it doesn't look particularly wet in that part of the UK. So, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Monday the 2nd of October. Low pressure is centred just to the northwest, so it's quite a changeable picture, although as I've just shown, it indicates very little rain in the southeast and east Anglia. The Canadian model at the same time has high pressure building up from the south, low pressure there just to the northwest. The German icon, it looks a little bit more mixed with a high pressure further southeast, perhaps. The European ECM, also has a changeable scenario with a westerly flow covering the UK, and that's why there was a little bit more rain in the southeast from the GFS, but even so, not especially wet there. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, it looks quite similar. Taking them together, the indications are quite clear. Driest and warmest, mostly in the south, wetter and cooler, periods more likely in the north. So a changeable pattern, high pressure to the south, building northwards at times and having some influence. There could be some relatively warm upper air in the mix as well, so temperatures above the average. Well, how is the second week looking? Of course, it's all about trends and probabilities at this range, nothing more. And to begin with, here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top. The signal is for them to be above average throughout the second week. The thick purple line there, the ensemble mean, stays above the 30-year norm, which is the thick black line. There is a big spread, though. In fact, this has been fluctuating quite a lot in recent days. 
a number of runs are bringing in very, very warm upper level air for the time of the year. But on this update, those are in the minority, but they are not to be discounted because, as I say, this has been varying quite a lot on successive GEFS runs. In terms of rain, well, there are some spikes showing up throughout the second week, but it does not look particularly wet. I would think some dry days, completely dry days are likely. There will be some rain around, though, so not, not completely dry throughout the week. All in all, though, it doesn't look too bad in this part of the UK. Here are the two metre temperatures in the data table. This shade of orange is dominating, runs going for between 16 and 20 Celsius. There are a few in the next category, up 21 to 25, also more yellow later on, so 11 to 15. The suggestion here that it may be turning somewhat cooler later through the second week and perhaps more changeable forward, just maybe a few more rain spikes showing up at the very end. But it is October. These temperatures are very respectable. Manchester, the air temperature profile, slightly above average on the whole, but once more, there is this big spread with a few runs bringing in significantly warmer upper level air. The risk of rain is ongoing. There are more spikes on this than there were on the London chart. It's a wetter picture as we go northwestwards. And also temperatures are a little bit lower. There is some of the orange shade in there, still quite a lot, 16s to 20s, but the dominant colour is this yellow, the 11s to 15. So temperatures dipping as we go northwestwards up to Glasgow. Does the trend continue? In terms of the air temperature profile, well, it's very close to the average now. So we started off with that reasonably significant positive anomaly in the London area. It was less in Manchester. And by the time we're getting up to Glasgow, the air temperatures at this level, at 850 HPA level, so 1500 metres above our heads, are very close to a 30 year average, but there is still quite a spread there, so a chance of it being warmer or perhaps cooler. So, because those runs are fluctuating quite a lot, it's just the mean which is averaging them all out is flattening it and bringing it close to that 30 year average. Rainfall, though, across the bottom, more spikes than there were on the Manchester chart, so it's a wet picture here, I think. Some significant amounts of rain through the second week. The two metre temperatures, so back down to the ground level, 11s to 15s are dominant. Some green showing up there, maximums of between 6 and 10, but it's the yellows which are in the majority. So taking all of these uh, charts together, the London, Manchester and Glasgow ones, they suggest the driest and warmest conditions will be in the south, the southeast, the coolest and wettest in the north and the northwest. Here are the ECM probability charts. Uh, they show the chance of five millimetres or more of rain falling on a given day. These are for the first three days of week two. Really just hammering home that message that it's going to be wettest in the northwest. The orange and red shading there on the first couple of charts shows approximately an 80% chance of five millimetres or more of rain falling in western Scotland. Head south and east, the lighter shading shows a chance falling to between 0 and 20%. The second set are for days four, five and six through week two. The pattern though remains consistent drier as you head southwards and eastwards, at least a lower chance of there being significant amounts of rain. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure ensemble plot, so this is generated by averaging out all the runs in the ensemble, is showing an Atlantic flow likely to be covering the UK, low pressure having more influence in the north, high pressure in the south, but at this stage there are suggestions that even in the south it may be starting to turn a bit more unsettled and a greater risk of rain in southern Britain through the second half of the second week. That's fitting in with the slight uptick in the number of rain spikes which were shown on the London chart. Here's the mean surface level pressure data table for York, so going forward through the second week. Yellow is dominant early on, 1,011 to 1,025 millibars, but 
the amount of green and blues increases, there is a downward trend in pressure uh, through the second half of week two. Also pointing towards a chance of it becoming more generally unsettled across all parts of the UK. So to summarise, week one, it's going to be changeable with heavy showers or longer spells of rain, but mostly in northern and western areas. Temperatures close to or above the average, and there is that likelihood of a stormy period through the middle of the week. For worst conditions, in the north and west. As I've been saying, rain amounts small in the southeast and east Anglia, and although it will be quite windy even there, it doesn't look disruptive. It's really northern Britain and western counties where those winds could well cause problems. And there is a chance we'll have a named storm. If that happens, it's going to be called Agnes. Week two, Dry and rather warm days are quite probable in the south, especially early on. Wet conditions, wet periods more frequent in the north, and that's where temperatures will be closer to the average. But later on, so through the second half of the second week, it may become more generally unsettled with the rain risk extending southwards and eastwards. So, uh, there we have it. Now, of those of you who've been paying attention, and that should be all of you, may notice that I look a little bit different. And the reason for that is because I'm having to refilm the end of this video because as I was doing the initial recording, the UK Met Office have named Wednesday's storm as Storm Agnes. So we have our first named storm of the new season. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Also, remember that you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.